Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at the Tucson TS16-G10. Uh, the reason I gave all the length for that is there's three different models of the TS16. There is this G10 version with D2 steel. This is the most budget version. Then they've got one with a titanium handle and D2 steel. And uh, that's the TS16-W. And then they've got a titanium and an M390, which is steel blade, which is the TS16-M390. Makes it kind of easy to remember. So it's a substantial knife, one of their early Tucson knives. So got a nice clip point there, uh, well, dramatic clip point, a little bit like a spay point blade. The blade is full thickness till we get just right close to the tip. So this is a very durable kind of knife. If that's the kind of thing that you're looking for, stick around. The full review is coming to you right now. So to start with, let me show you a couple still pictures of the uh, titanium version. So there you go, the G10 version is a little bit thicker in the handle and much more dramatic in the handle as well in some ways because this black and white G10 really makes it uh, stand out, doesn't it? It's very dramatic. Pocket clip, it's their standard uh, pocket clip that the Night Morning Design knives have in the early Two Suns um, series. Uh, later Two Sun knives have different pocket clips even on the G10. Of course, the titanium version's got a nice custom titanium pocket clip. But this is a very standard pocket clip that you see over and over again. And I just talked about it on the TS-17 uh, a few days ago or a week ago or so. And I'm not very fond of this end of the pocket clip right here. It sticks out too far. Uh, so I've not bent this one down yet. I will definitely be bending this one down a little bit. It fits onto the pockets so very easily. There's lots of room to slide that over a pocket. So there you go. And you can just, if you looked at it, if you could see it from the side, you'd see that there's a lot of room underneath there. You know, you could have much thicker pocket material and still have it go over there very easily. And then, you know, the rest of it's quite tight because it actually holds very, very tightly. So... I'm going to do two things. I'm going to bend this down a little bit and I'm going to take some of the tension out of the spring right here. So open this up a tiny bit just to relieve some pressure on the spring and then bend this down and it'll be much more functional. But since that is an after modification, that's not part of this review. I'm going to review it the way it comes from the factory. It sits in the pocket like that. So there's a whole lot of knife sticking out of the pocket. I didn't measure that before. So let's just measure that. So it's like an inch and an eighth. So you have to not mind an inch and an eighth of your handle sticking out there. I put on the screen what that is in millimeters. So as far as that goes, the pocket clip is the big con. So we get the big con out of the way. Oh, I forgot to do the comparison, uh, size comparison thing. Uh, here's my Ontario Rat 1. It's, you know, often considered you know a standard knife it's quite large for a standard knife if you take a look at these two knives they're very similar where the where the pivot pins line up and then the handles line up on the end you know this blade is longer of course it's got much less of a belly so you got more cutting edge but and a little bit more grip area here as well since the grip area here you lose a lot right there from the anterior rat, although you can do, you know, that forward grip right there, which you can't do on this knife. So that's that part. Let's keep talking about the knife here. Let's go a uh, little bit more about the handle. You've got not really a finger choil here, but sort of a finger choil. And then it's got like, almost looks like steps, doesn't it? If I use my hand instead of that gray background, you can see how it goes up and then down and then up and then down like that. It's actually very comfortable in hand as far as that part goes. The edges here are rounded nicely, you know, and back here it's rounded. It's got a really gentle, slow drop G10 backspacer with big jimping on it. And then you've got an inset and a very inset 
G10 um, lanyard hole. So let's see if I can get this to focus here. So you see that lanyard hole, and then not only is it inset, but the G10 itself is also milled in a little bit. So you're not going to get a big bulk there at all. I don't actually, I do like this a lot. I was going to say I don't mind it, but I'm going to say it in a positive way. I do like it the way this uh, lanyard hole is made. The screws here, you've got your typical two sun, you know, very well made screws. Uh, there's your pivot pin body screw. I have not taken this apart yet. I usually do it right at the end of the video. I suspect it's free spinning, but I have tried just to loosen this a little bit uh, with my uh, T8 driver and it doesn't free spin along, even though, you know, the other knives that are this age from Tucson are designed that they could free spin. They just don't. And all the other screws there are T8 as well. All of them are inset except for the pocket clip screws. Those have that round sort of mushroom head kind of screw. There's some skeletonizing in the liners. And so uh, why don't I show you the insides of the knife right now? And uh, here's the knife taken apart. I took those screws out. Uh, there's a bit of skeletonizing here. And the way they did it kind of looks cool, but uh, I think they could have removed more steel to help this uh, weigh just a little bit less and you'll get the weights and everything soon. Uh, no skeletonizing on this side, so they could have done a little bit on here, I think. You know, some right there. The balance point on the knife the way it is right now is pretty much perfect. Uh, so maybe they didn't want to skeletonize anymore. There's the uh, ceramic ball bearings. And uh, if I clean this off a little bit, I like how Tucson puts a little ramp right there for the detent to ride up so it doesn't, uh, it's not a hard push to start to close it and then all of a sudden it gets much easier. It just is nice and consistent when you go to close it. So uh, there you go. That's how the knife is uh, put together. Now that was a bit of video that I recorded after I've recorded everything else. I just inset it there. So you saw the ceramic ball bearings in there, the ceramic detent. How do I know? Well, that's in the list in the description. <laughs> so I know that that's in there. So it's a well-made knife in that regard. Uh, holds together well. It's very strong, very durable. I like it an awful lot. As you've seen already, there's a flipper. The flipper's got fairly fine jimping right there. And light switch method works just fine. And if you push down on just a slight angle, that works very well as well. So the flipper is made very well. I've got no complaints about the flipper itself and it behaves as a nice guard there. Sharpener's choil is well done. So after the uh, plunge right there, uh, there's enough of the sharpener's choil to take out enough steel so that when you're sharpening the knife, you're not gonna mess up and you know file into the plunge there. You've got a slight, well, it's fairly close to straight here, but it's very slightly rounded, and then it comes round and up just a little bit there. Very nice belly, a nice uh, grind here, a nice saber grind, which is a flat grind that comes up most of the way or part way up a blade, but not all the way. And then you've got that sort of spade point tip here. Now from this angle, you can really see how they've made this full thickness right to the end here, and then it drops down. There's a little bit of a uh, chamfer in here, which makes it look thinner along here, and then it goes thicker again, but it doesn't really. It's the same thickness all the way along. And I'll give you those dimensions in just a minute. You've got these, um, I don't know what to call these things, mini fullers, micro fullers. They're not in line this way along the blade, but they're up and down. It's kind of interesting. You've got the first seven of them are fairly shallow, and then the eighth one, right closest to the handle, is deeper. And they did that on both sides. One con about these is they catch dirt. Check this out. Now that's a picture that I took just before I started talking in this video. You know, after all my trials, I do play with, not play with my knives, I do play with them. But I do work with my knives, I test them out, you know, I give them a good workout. And just 
over that workout period, that's how much a little bit of dirt accumulated in there, just, you know, from touching the blade in different ways. Um, you can't really see it when it's just, you know, with the naked eye, but once you get it in the microscope, you can see that there are, there's uh, dirt in there. Not a big deal. You can use a toothbrush and brush that out. Fairly good grind. And um, the, the bevel grind is done very well. It's even all the way along. The final grind is done fairly even most of the way along. And um, let's go over all of that stuff now, those dimensions and uh, that kind of thing. So as long as this tape measure is on the screen, I'm talking uh, specs and information like that. So we've got a weight of 144 grams, 5.1 ounces. Uh, the specs on the internet say it's a little bit less than that, but nope, mine isn't. Mine is 5.1 ounces, 144 grams. The factory sharpness, I got a score of 120 best. Very good. Good sharpness from the factory. Uh, the cutting edge length and the blade length, so the tip to the closest spot on the handle, are the same. 9.8 centimeters, 3.86 inches. So it's an almost 4 inch blade. Not bad. The blade thickness, 3.74 millimeters, which is 0.147, so 147 thousandths of an inch. That's really close to 530 seconds. The blade depth right there, I usually do it about an inch up from the sharpness to 2.46 centimeters, 0.968, so it's almost an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, and again, about an inch up from the end here, 0.44 millimeters, which is 0 0.0175, so 17 and a half thousandths. Not bad at all. That's nice and thin. I like it like that. D2 can certainly handle being that thin. The grind angle. On this side, it's 18.6 degrees. On this side, it's 20.4 degrees. Not bad again. It's totally common for the two sides to be different because they sharpen them by hand and people aren't perfectly ambidextrous. You know, the angle that you do on one side is often different than the angle you do on the other side. It's just natural. The uh, handle now, the handle length is 12.22 centimeters, 4.81 inches. So 4.81, 3.86, very good balance between the length of the blade to the length of the handle. Uh, the grip area in here is about 10.4 centimeters, just over 4 inches, 4.1 inches, something like that. It depends where exactly do you measure from, you know, because that little angle here on the end of the handle, you know, do you add that in or not? That's why my grip areas are sort of rounded a little bit. Uh, the handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 1.69 centimeters. That's 0.664 inches. So for some people, they might find that handle to be a little bit too thick. My hands are between large and extra large, between 10 and 11 in European men's glove sizes, and I find it to be very, very comfortable indeed. Um, the handle depth now, it's biggest right here. Well, it's a little bit bigger right there, but where, the, where your grip is, the biggest is right here. 2.46 centimeters, that's 0.968 inches. Well, you've heard that measurement before. That was the blade depth, so the same thing here. When you close the knife, now this measurement here is 2.92 centimeters, 1.148 of an inch. The total length of the blade, when the blade's deployed, the whole knife and handle and everything, 22 centimeters, 8.66 inches. So that's 8 and 5 eighths of an inch. Very good overall. The balance point on this knife is, you know, try to get it again right there, right there. So not bad at all. My finger's on a bit of an angle, so it's straighten that out a little bit. So as you can see, it's right where it should be. I like this knife quite a lot in terms of its specs, except for the pocket clip. Well, I've got other cons too, and we'll get to them in just a minute now. Let's go over what I think are the pros and the cons and anything special. But first, the price. How much does this knife cost? I bought mine for $40 on eBay. I went to an auction on eBay and paid $40, which is a good deal. Uh, White Mountain Knives has it listed for $33.99, but it's not in stock. Uh, now, you can go to their website. They've got actually all three blades, three options listed. They're all on their Notify Me status. So you click that Notify Me button, you put your email address in, and when they get them in stock, they will email you. Uh, you can do that, and then you can also email them directly and ask them if they're going to be ordering those knives or not, um, and then decide if you're going to get it with them or not. 
Remember, at White Mountain Knives, you get 10% off the listed price when you use my coupon code CCE. That's Canadian Cutting Edge. That's for anything and everything they have in the store. Now, on um, eBay, they've got this knife listed uh, $44.95. That's a standard buy now price. Uh, another vendor has it for $48.27. So that's roughly the price. So don't go in your auction over $44 because you might as well just buy, use the buy now option instead of paying $60 for this knife, right? Uh, there's also auctions for some of the titanium ones as well. So, you know, check that out if that's what you want to do. Um, I haven't converted any of the prices into uh, other currencies. I've given you the American dollar price. Uh, you can do the conversion to your currency as needed. So let's talk about the overall features, what I like, don't like, and summary, and then we're done. Well, I like that there's a titanium version. If, you know, I was doing a channel that isn't budget, I'd be reviewing the titanium one. Um, I still do review some knives that are over about $65, but generally $65 is the limit on my budget for what a budget knife is. That's what I'm going with for 2020 anyways. I do like to find knives that cost a whole lot less though. So this is nice. It's decorative. I like the look of it. Uh, one limitation is this is not a piercing blade. It's not designed to, you know, pierce into things, but it is a very strong blade, full thickness all the way along till you get just close to the tip. Uh, this is going to have a difficult time breaking if you use it to slam into things and pry, although I still don't recommend prying. Uh, it, it's got a nice grind. It's got that nice look with those little micro fullers in there. Uh, the G10 looks attractive in my opinion. The handle's a little bit unique, you know, the way it's made there. And I like how it looks. The, the back spacer's done well. Lanyard hole's done very well. Action is awesome. Lockup is very good. Might be a tiny bit early for some people, but it's very good. No blade play side to side, up and down. The alignment when the knife is closed is near perfect. And I've already talked to you about how smooth the bearings are. Action is very, very good. One limitation on it is, well, not limitation, one con is, other than the pocket clip, I wish this was cut away a little bit more down here for a little better access to the liner lock release. Or maybe if they put some jimping on the side here, because I find myself sometimes not quite engaging the liner lock when I want to disengage the lock. So that's a very minor con, but it is a con. The pocket clip is a much bigger con. The milling on the G10 here isn't just for looks. It does give a little bit better grip, and it's not hot in the hand at all. It's very well done, although that pocket clip is hot in the hand. Um, I already talked about how well the flipper works. Well, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this knife. I, I rather like it. You might too, if you do like it, then uh, consider buying one, consider using my links, uh, my coupon codes. I've got everything written down below and uh, I've got lots of information written down below, not just of this knife, but all kinds of other things that I do. If you want to become a Patreon supporter of my channel, that really helps me out an awful lot. Just go to patreon.com slash CCE and uh, my Patreon supporters get a chance to win stuff. So there you go. Thanks for watching my video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.